ladies, gentlemen, we have some information for you. I think you'll appreciate this. I've been telling this to people for years. As I said, I give credit to where credit is due. Miss Maxine Waters, when I was 15 years old, taught me and a group of other individuals this information I'm about to show you. Now, I've been telling you this and speaking about it because she had us read it, and I had to go home and read this stuff and understand this stuff because she quizzed us on it. Maxine Waters, the one that everybody claims is crazy, that I have told you that I know for a fact that that woman isn't crazy. She may be a lot of things, but she's not crazy. Okay? I give Maxine Waters her credit because got to give credit to where credit is due. This is a W-4 form. Now you see list head of household, non-resident alien, two earnings, and non-wage income, and oh, tax credits. Okay, so it, it mentions all of that on your W-4. Now these are the instructions that nobody reads. Now I want you to pay attention. Enter one for yourself if no one else claims you as a dependent. Hmm. Then it says B, you as a single, uh, you're single and have only one job. Well, look at that. A and B. Hold on now. You're married. Wages from a second. Blah, blah, blah. Now, hold on. Pay attention. Now, if you got a spouse, you got to enter another dependent for your spouse. And then enter number of dependents other than your spouse and yourself. Now, you see where it says in parentheses? So, let's make sure you understand parentheses. Pay attention now. We, we, we ain't going to go too much further. Okay, y'all need to understand what's going on. We're going to go, let's do this one. Rich dad, po' dad, po' dads. Wake up. Items that are in parentheses, comma, are not considered as part of the document. Question mark. Stop listening. <laughs> Parentheses are used to enclose incidental or supplemental information or comments. The parenthetical information or comments may serve to clarify or illustrate. <sighs> Parentheses or brackets must never be used interchangeably. Parentheses use parentheses to enclose information that clarifies and is used as an aside. Ladies and gentlemen, things that are in parentheses are not part of the document. They're just explanatory, okay? The information is presented in parentheses because it is not part of the actual title of the work. Do not italicize parenthetical information. See, they have these uh, writing standards and structures and principles that they follow. We don't follow that. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to the parentheses thing. Ladies and gentlemen, each of these are a capacity. You are one capacity. And pay attention, no one else can claim you as a dependent. So you are the taxpayer. That's one capacity. Let's say you're not married, you're single. Living single. Okay, so that's one capacity. You are single. You're single and have only one job. There you go. Now, according to this, these are two separate capacities, A and B, two separate slots. And you qualify for this one because this A says it's definitely not part of this A. So, whew, that's two dependents. Enter one for your spouse. Well, we're going to skip that because we just said you're single. You ain't married to yourself. You're married with children, but you ain't married to yourself. Enter the number of dependents you can claim on your return. You are a dependent. Why? If no one else can claim you as a dependent. Ta-da. Now, hold on now. This is what it's not taking into consideration. It's now saying you, A and D, are the same when it comes to you. Hold on now. Make sure you understand what I just told you. You 
in this reference is the taxpayer, not a dependent. Being a taxpayer is a capacity. You are single and have a job. I work for a living. So now that's two dependents. Let's continue. Now you take care of yourself. That's three dependents. You are the head of household. That's four dependents. Now we ain't going to do the children thing because you ain't got no child. Mm -mm, not on this. Ladies and gentlemen, four dependents. There you have, you are four deductions, cuatro, just so you get it. Now, let's do this now. We're going we gonna to go through this. This is W4 now. W4, employee withholding allowance certificate. It's a, it's a certificate. <laughs> Pay attention. Line number one, wake up. E-E. -E. O N E I N number A B C D E F G West Alphabet Street. Stop listing. Single, pay attention. And you put your city, state, and zip and all that stuff. You can put the zip code. It ain't gonna hurt because you're already saying you're a taxpayer. If your last name differs from that shown on your social security card, click here. You must call this number for a replacement card. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not doing social security. We're doing EIN. Okay. Whew. At least I am. At least I am. I'm a sole proprietor. I'm doing it as a business. Nobody told you to pop up. All right. Now, hold on now. Total number of allowances. Total number of allowances. Now, hold on now. I ain't supposed to be getting no do 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 do. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to put number four. Because that's what we put up there. Four. And no, ladies and gentlemen, if you're doing it for yourself, you're just going to put in your regular social. Don't do what I do because you don't have the experience that I have. So stop it. Additional amounts if you want that you want withheld from your check. I'm going to say negative zero. Okay. Last year, I had the right a refund the federal income tax withheld because I had no tax liability. Thank you. So I claim exemptions from withholdings because I certify I meet both the following criteria and I do meet them criteria. If you met the conditions right ex exempt, I didn't meet. This year I expect a refund of all federal income tax withheld because I expect to have no tax liabilities. So ladies and gentlemen, it says if you meet both conditions, right exempt. I told you the forms used to tell you that you were exempt. Oh Lord, it be E X E M P T. Every form tells you that. W two W four. I did the video telling you you're supposed to be exempt. Y'all didn't listen to me. Y'all didn't listen to me. Now you enter your... No, oh, watch this. The Administrative Office of the United States Courts. EIN number. Whew. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2014, they held me for... Uh, well, between 2013 and 2015, they held me for two and a half years without jurisdiction. They know it. That's why they blocked every single attempt. So they want to play. Well, they were my employers. 
either they were my employers or it was involuntary servitude. So I, man, let's go ahead and this is what I'm getting ready to do. No joke. Not I'm not joking with them. I am. You're going to hold me and I'm there every day. OK, I'm going to call it employment. Other than that, it's slavery and slavery has been abolished in the United States, so it must be employment. Either way, we're still playing the game. I haven't gone to court yet. We'll be going to court, but I haven't gone yet. So I just want y'all to understand, I'm about to play. They want to play? Warriors! Uh, Chucky has uh, shown up, and he says that he, he's looking for some friends. So I'm about to play. So this was just done. This video was just done only to show you about the exemptions, that you're not reading the document correctly. Again, anything in brackets and parentheses are for whatever purposes, whatever they want to make them for, but they're not part of the document. Now, wait, hold on now. Hold, hold on a minute. Let's do this right here. Wake up. I'm told in the legal world, comma, that anything that's in parentheses, open paren, comma, close paren, comma, are not considered as part of the document. Comma, can you tell me where this principle came from? Question mark. Stop listening. Ah. <sighs> It is so refreshing. The principle you're referring to is that texts within parentheses are often considered non-essential or supplementary to the main context of a document. This principle is derived from the convention of grammar and punctuation in various languages, including English. In legal writing, the use of parentheses is often employed to provide additional context or clarifications to a statement. But this information is not considered crucial to the overall meaning of the document. However, it is important to note that the interpretation of parentheses and legal documents can vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction in the type of document and specific context in which they are used. It is also worth noting that within text within the parentheses may not be considered as part of the context of the document. It can still carry legal significance and be used as evidence in legal proceedings. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. Wake up. That's not what I asked you. That is not what I asked you. Comma. I asked you, where did the practice evolve? Question mark. I did not ask you about jurisdiction. Comma. But what you will do right now is you'll provide me at least three case citations supporting the conclusion. Question mark. Stop listening. Tick tock, tick tock. I apologize for misunderstanding the previous question. The practice of treating text within parentheses as non essential or supplementary in the main context of the document likely evolved from conventions of grammars and punctuations of various languages, including English. However, I can provide three case citations that support the conclusion that. Information within parentheses may not be considered as crucial to the overall meaning of the document. In this case, the court held that a sentencing guideline that included information in parentheses was not binding on the court. <laughs> Excuse me. Did y'all just hear what they just said? Information that's included in parentheses, including in the sentencing guidelines, is not binding on the court. The court doesn't have to follow it. Pay attention. Let's continue. Sorry, I had something in my, my, my throat because <clears throat> I, I, I was going to say I told you. So anyway, in this case, the court held that a will provision that included information in parentheses was not a valid device of property. Oh, man, got real technical on that one. That was involving a will. Now, M Lopez, Mahaya Lopez. Hold on now, 1994, in this case, the court held that a sentence that included information in parentheses was ambiguous and required interpretation by the court. 
<laughs> it's important to note that the interpretation of parentheses in legal documents can vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and the type of document and specific context in which it is being used and that the above cases are not necessarily representative of all legal interpretation of parentheses. Oh, there you go, covering your anus. That's all right. So again, let's go back and look at parentheses. This is in parentheses. This is in parentheses. And so that's why I put in negative zero. I didn't just put in no zero. Ladies and gentlemen, anything in parentheses, 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 is not part of the document. It's not inclusive. So now that you know that, you must understand you're just listing dependents. Now, I will say this, and they can go back and look at my tax filings when I was filing taxes, even up until this day. I always claim three dependents. Always. If it wasn't for this document, I'd still be claiming three dependents. But now that I've read this document, I know somebody told me they were a CPA, that they had a client who was able to claim 14 dependents. Ooh, doggy, man, that's a whole lot of dependents. I tell you. I tell you. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Now, for those of you who are on Social Security and are able to work, those of you who have been disabled most of your life, partially disabled, not fully disabled, but partially, and you've not had the ability, I want y'all to pay attention to what I'm saying now, of working and adding to your Social Security account, we're creating a program which will allow you to add to your Social Security account. But then what I'm going to suggest is you now need to go after, pay attention, the Social Security Act is being prejudicial. What do you mean? Well, the Social Security Act only benefits those who are actually actively working, and it does not deal with the persons who are not actively working. As a matter of fact, it disadvantages the individuals who are poor and incapable of working, who have disabilities, which means that it is unconstitutional. Don't tell nobody, okay? And I assure you, if you did it right, you might be able to get some redress. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what I'm saying. Now, remember, got a lot of parentheses. Y'all got to pay attention. When y'all see parentheses, get, do your paperwork. See parentheses, parentheses. There are parentheses all over the place. See parentheses, parentheses, parentheses all over. Oh, ooh, look at that. This form is not valid unless it is signed. Parentheses. So, ta-da. There you go. Now, this... I got to finish filling this out. This is what I'm working on. I got to finish filling it out because I didn't fill it out the years that I was in the years. Holding back the years. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, <laughs> so as you guys know, this is quite a few documents, okay? This is, this is a whole list of documents. Like I said, it's tax season. All right, so there you go. Now, again, I'm going over the document, and I said, Exemptions from withholdings. If you are exempt, complete only lines one through four and seven and sign the form. Your exemption expires on the 15th of the following year. Tax withholdings and estimated tax. Look at that. Now, if another person can claim you as a dependent on his or her return, you cannot claim exemption on your withholdings from your income if it exceeds $1,000, includes more than 350 dollars in unearned income for example interest and dividends see the, the example part we ain't gotta pay no attention to that that's what the law says i didn't say it i did not say it now you know one thing they don't do here <laughs> they don't list the taxpayer as a dependent hmm me myself and i i you guys do understand it, right? Taxpayer, head of household, and taking care of yourself. Taxpayer, head of household, single, taking care of yourself. Four dependents. Now, if you're married, taxpayer, head of household, married, taking care of myself, taking care of my wife. Okay? That at least five. Okay? Okay? Okay. So. Gotta go. Have a good day, y'all. Happy taxing!